Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm going to be bringing you a lesson today that is a technique I use often, which is combining watercolor and soft pastel. I love this technique because it helps me to keep a more impressionistic feel, which uh, is kind of the focus of a lot of the artists who subscribe to this channel. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel if you want more free art lessons like this. I wanted to show you right now my technique that I use when I'm doing um, uh, pastel painting on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper, paper will warp when you apply water to it, so I want to keep it from warping as much as possible. So what I do is I just take plain old blue painter's tape that you get at any hardware store and I apply it to the back side. I like to work on the side of the watercolor paper that's the bumpy side. Um, again, more impressionistic and uh, it also takes the watercolor better. And so this is the back side, this is the smooth side and I'm just applying the tape all the way around and I'll have a little bit of a, you know, a quarter inch edge uh, off of it. Then I peel it up and I'm going to flip it over. I put a piece of tape on the top to be able to adhere it to the board. Now what this is going to do, it's going, see how I just apply this tape to the very top of it? So a little bit is going to stick to my board now. So what it's going to do is allow me to paint all the way to the edges. Now you can see I've put that one piece up there to hold it. I'm applying the blue tape. It's going to make all of these edges stay down uh, quite well so that when I do the watercolor painting, it's not going to warp as bad. So these are my little hydrangeas I found from my yard. Some of you know my saga and my story with our home flooding and how we had to move to another place. And this place just had some treasures underneath a bunch of weeds like these hydrangeas. This is just, I, I didn't slow this down because this is just a sketch. I used vine charcoal. Um, I wanted to keep it loose and free, but at the same time, it's very important to get your drawing accurate. It is the good bones of any good artwork. But at the same time, I don't want to be so fussy and detailed, but I want the basics good. Now, I've got my little watercolor palette here. This is a nice little watercolor travel palette. And uh, all I'm going to be doing now, keeping it loose, loose, loose at this stage, um, you don't want to get too fussy and detailed. It's almost better if you just have it kind of crazy and loose here. Uh, keeping your values right, even with watercolor. You know I talk about value, the difference between the lights and the darks all the time in pastel painting. Well, it works the same for watercolor in any medium. So what I'm doing now is I'm just getting a general mood. And, um, you know, I, I happen to like watercolor painting as well, even though I focus my channel mostly on pastel painting. That's my main medium I use. But I use watercolor painting a lot for underpaintings. So you can just see me kind of going crazy here, getting in the values, keeping it loose. One of the things when you, if you start to play around with watercolor, one of the tricks is to figure out the um, uh, amount of water versus paint and uh, to keep it flowing right. Um, so that's a that's a whole nother lesson, but uh, hopefully you'll just play around with this a little bit It's best to practice. Don't start a real serious piece if you've never done these techniques before Just get something small and play around and consider it a study Then you won't get too frustrated if it doesn't come out great Most likely it's not gonna come out great the first few times you try this just like my things <laughs> did not come out great The first few times I tried it so um, practice 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 and mostly have fun fun and don't be afraid to mess something up and throw it away you know work on some cheap supplies at first and uh and just have fun and if you haven't already done so check out our monet cafe art group on facebook it's a great group we've got thousands of artists from all over the world uh learning together that way you can just ask questions and it doesn't have to be just me that answers those questions you get advice from a lot of there's advanced artists intermediate artist and a lot of beginners on there so if you're a beginner you'll love that group you get lots of advice so again just working through this uh, getting in the right values for the uh, underpainting this is called an underpainting if you're curious of what it is a lot of people are very um, have a lot of questions about an underpainting just like I did when I got started I heard all these artists throwing these terms out underpainting underpainting what is it I mean it's literally what it says it's a painting underneath your painting <laughs> or a toning your paper underneath your painting and what it does is it establishes a mood it establishes your values and in the end I find it helps for your final piece to have a much more painterly and uh, impressionistic style. Um, so again, I'm just getting in my general foundation right now with the watercolor. And uh, then I'm going to share with you the next thing that we do 
um, which is to make right now this is this paper is not going to take pastel very well even after I'm done with the watercolor it's because it's smooth it's got a little bit of a bumpiness to it because it's watercolor paper but it will not hold pastel um, soft pastels to it they will uh, you will basically only be able to get like one layer and uh, they just kind of start falling right off and getting muddy after you apply more so we're gonna do a lot of you guys know this already if you've been on this channel we're gonna do a little trick and um, it's a neat trick it's inexpensive um, to make the pastel stick after this so let me get finished with this watercolor painting you can enjoy it I don't think it takes much longer and then we'll get started with our little trick to be able to apply the pastels I thought I'd add a comment here because I get a lot of questions about how do I choose my colors? A lot of times I know my colors may not appear to be exactly what the reference photo is, but as a general rule of thumb, I basically, I think we can train our eyes to see subtleties in color. So even though the reference photo to the right uh, doesn't appear to have a lot of yellow in it, I had some of the sunlight coming in from my window. And if you look, if you start training your eyes, you can kind of see those yellows in the uh, lower right hand side on the wall there and kind of up above it and uh, then of course always with shadows you can intensify them with color um, instead of just doing grays you can do blues and purples and uh, try to use things other than black or gray um, just use a darker value of something and uh, typically that will um, enhance your color and your painting so that's just a general rule of thumb Oh, now for the magic trick. Well, it's not a magic trick, but it's a trick. It's liquid gesso, clear liquid gesso. That was fast, huh? <laughs> it's just a product that you can use. I use a foam brush and basically all I'm doing is you can see putting it on the foam brush. I usually work top to bottom and I just give a, um, a kind of a thin layer, but I'm not too skimpy with the application. I put enough of it on the brush to really be able to get it on there good. But you also might notice some people are like, oh, you're just blending your watercolor painting but I like it I think it kind of blends it softens it and makes it an even better uh, underpainting for creating that mood that I like so then all I do after this is I usually get out my blow dryer and I just dry it but it's dry it I dried a little darker here and uh, now it's time to get started applying pastel now as I typically do I start working with uh, values and getting my darks in. I noticed underneath that uh, one hydrangea, uh, the top of the bottle there is some of the darkest dark. So just going to go ahead and establish that um, because you know value is relative to other values. So and color is too. Um, in other words, something dark will look darker next to something light. It won't look as dark next to something of a medium value. So I like to try to get some of the values in kind of all over the painting uh, before I get too set on one area. But I'm again, I'm trying to get some of the values in of this bottle. Notice I'm staying loose. I also like to go in the direction of how the object would be and that your strokes if you keep them directional uh, they're going to be much more believable so sometimes people ask me i talk a lot about how different uh, types of pastels based on their hardness or their softness are better to apply either as initial layers or final layers uh, basically harder pastels are better to apply at the beginning because they don't take up as much of the tooth or the grit in this case I don't have a lot of grit because all it is is a, a layer of clear gesso unlike sanded pastel papers that give you a lot more layering so I have to be careful of that but medium uh, hardness pastels are good um, really kind of all over the place but the softies oh I just jumped ahead sorry I missed some video footage there but the real softies are best to use at the end because they will still um, apply on top of other layers whereas your harder pastels will hardly show up at the very end of a painting however on that note um, I have people ask me often you know uh, uh, about when I use this pastel or that pastel with soft or hard and basically I don't have a gazillion pastels like some artists do so often I pick the pastel oh sorry for my head there I pick the pastel more based on the color than the hardness or the softness sometimes that's all I have is the um, something that it may not be the perfect 
um, hardness or softness, but it's the right color. So I usually let color be the main reason for me making the choice. But that's just a good general thing to keep in mind is that your real softies are best to use at the end. Um, some of the softest pastels are the Terry Ludwig pastels. I believe Great Americans. I don't have any, but they're pretty soft. Um, and then medium pastels would be more of your Rembrandts. Um, and you know, I actually just recently toured the Mount Vision Pastel Company because it's located near me in Tampa, Florida, and it was wonderful. Wow, what a great tour. There's a video of that tour here on my YouTube channel. Go find it if you want to, if you're interested in how pastels are made. It's very interesting. But Mount Vision Pastels, I love those pastels. They are a great pastel for really all phases of your work. Um, and I recommend if you're a beginner that's a that's a good beginner um, pastel to get and in the video of the tour um, the owner Carl Kelly gives a recommendation as to a good beginner set to get for the for somebody who's just starting out so there's a little tip on that but um, you can just see I'm just working establishing things but not getting overly nitpicky see I'm still trying to keep that loose feel I don't have those flowers so perfect um, I actually, I have the advantage in making these videos of being able to watch them when they're done and I see things that I would change or do differently. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I had stopped right there <laughs> and not done anymore. But uh, hey, we're all learning and uh, the more you paint, the better you get. So anyway, enjoy uh, some of this process and um, please comment, ask questions and feel free um, to ask me anything. I try very hard to respond. Um, to all of the questions that I get on here. But more importantly, uh, go find Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook and uh, you'll get uh, not just me answering questions, but lots of other artists helping you out. So anyway, let's keep painting here and having fun.
I thought I'd make a point here that um, as I'm painting this last geranium to take note that I uh, over the years I think all artists learn to do this I learn to paint more by shape and value than I do what the item actually is or what the object is that I'm painting so you start to train your eye to where you're looking at lightnesses darknesses and shapes and you forget that it's a flower and that's probably one of the best things that I can recommend that you start to try to focus on I did one of my videos um, a, a little uh, tip to help to get better at that is actually to turn your reference image upside down and uh, try to draw it upside down so if you have a you know something a photograph or something on your iPad you can't flip your iPad over because it'll automatically turn right side up you have to literally get in and edit it and make it go upside down if you're on the iPad but um, try doing that because it's a way that you can um, make yourself train yourself to start looking at what the the shapes are and kind of untrain your brain to think about what it actually is often that is a real um, negative for us as artists when we start trying to paint what we think something is instead of what it actually uh, is represented because um, it that's just a real um, handicap that we have because our brain tries to fill in things instead of uh, just numbing yourself to see only what the shapes are and what the values are so anyway not to belabor that point but it's a very very important lesson as artists for us to do I'd like to make a point here on something I sometimes do at the end of a painting or towards the end of a painting is I start to add uh, little sketchy marks. I think it creates energy and movement in the painting and it makes it lively. Those pastels that I'm using there are harder pastels. They're called Prismacolor New Pastels, N-U, not N-E-W, New Pastels. And um, they actually, typically, like I said at the beginning, sometimes they don't work when you've got too many layers down, but I've actually still got enough grit here to be able to um, get some of these down. But uh, in a minute, I haven't quite done it a lot here yet, but in a minute, I start using them to kind of make these sketchy outlines. I'm doing a little bit there with the darker one. Then I do it with some of the lighter ones towards the end of the painting. What it does is it, it kind of um, expands the borders of the flowers and makes them not so fixed looking. And again, it just adds a real loose and uh, movement to the painting, you know. So anyway, that's something that I've uh, just kind of learned over the years and uh, play around with that. It's, uh, it's kind of fun um, and uh, will give some life to your painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly enjoyed having some time to paint. And it was indeed a treasure to find these beautiful hydrangeas in my backyard and uh, just enjoy this beautiful process of art. Please subscribe to my channel and come back and visit more often.